an okay day one performance. I mean, this was already going to be an important game for Royal Never Give Up, but I think it's even that much more important now that Kingzone has dropped a game. They are more approachable in the standings. RNG wants to move to the top and be tied for first place, and with a win here, they would do that. They certainly could, and it looks like the way in which they're going to do that is by focusing bands towards Yijin. This man had a pretty strong game too yesterday when he got his hands on the Zac. When the 10 minute mark came around, he was non-stop ganking. But for RNG, they say, we want to take you off some of your big comfort picks in Kha'Zix and Graves. His Zac also could be targeted if, if they want to look towards that game against Team Liquid. He was relentless, as you said, in the mid lane, but also finding constant engages in the mid and late game as well. I have to keep our eyes on it throughout the, uh, throughout the game. Camille banned out by Royal Never Go Up, Cogmo as well, the Swain, the Kaiser taken away by Evos, and he said the Royal Never Go Up can tie Kingzone at the top of the table. If Evos win, they Evos. tie it up as well. Yeah. What a debut that would be for the Vietnamese region as an as a independent region here at MSI. Yeah, I mean, they are a major region now, and they have been showing so much growth. It's actually the second biggest player base of any region in the world. Gigabyte Marines showed that they were an international threat. Now Evo's taking them down in the finals, moving on to the international stage, trying to prove that there is so much talent coming from this region. And if they could take down LPL, that would be incredible. And one of those big talents is Warzone in the middle lane, getting one of his big comfort picks in Cassie. Pair. He has a 100% win rate on the champion so far, and his damage per minute difference over his opposition has been rather significant in all of those wins. He's doing 200 damage a minute more than his enemy laner, which is, as you say, devastating, especially for a mid laner. Zaya Rakan here for RNG, though. That's a very strong bottom lane with a very strong AD carry piloting the Zaya. Yeah, no kidding. Uzi and Ming, certainly a frightening duo. You know, they really are in the conversation alongside Prey and Grill for who would be the best. And it's interesting to me when on day one, Rakan gets through bans zero times, day two, two games in, picked twice. Right off the bat. 0% win rate, though. 0% well, win rate, so. there you go. So Evos, they're thinking a couple steps ahead. And look at how quickly this draft just comes through from both sides. It feels like a lot of prep has come into this, as RNG have already drafted themselves not only a very strong two versus two in the bottom lane, but they've gotten themselves an early strong jungler in the form of Ola for MLXG of all people as well. Where for Evos, they've just seemed to go for comfort. They put Stark on top of the Orn, which he used to solo kill Impact yesterday, and it offers a strong engage along with Warzone's Casio to give them a very stable mid lane spike. Yeah, definitely. And, and if you're looking at late game power, the, the comp here from Evos that is kind of starting to shape up is going to be incredibly powerful. But when I look at RNG, I see, well, that is a terrifying three early game picks. Oh, for sure. Olaf can get in the face of Trundle early and take over a game. You can put on the gank pressure. This bottom lane duo is so incredibly powerful. And one of the things that's kind of concerning for Evos is that is a blind pick Cassiopeia. This is not into a rise. This is blind. So you could be going up against something, you know, like a longer range pick or an Oriata, which can really start to make Cassio struggle in that mid lane. Ron OP is being pushed to his second tier of supports as well. We've seen him mostly on the Alistair this tournament. That's banned out, Braum's banned out. Slay has Ezreal, which is a safe-ish lane, but I wonder what Ron OP is actually going to be able to align with that. RNG have the top and the mid lane to pick here. Picking into the Casio, a wealth of opportunities. In terms of what you could do, Xiaohu could go for the Vladimir. We know that he is comfortable on the champion, and it will it does okay into the Casio, but typically during the laning phase, you can struggle with the amount of harassment that she throws out. Yeah, I actually wouldn't be super surprised if that was also a top lane Vladimir into Orn, because despite also how true. it went last game, I do think that is quite a preferential matchup, and you can go for something like an Orianna, which is generally considered very good in the Casio, uh, but it all comes down to what do they want to run? Do you want a pure tank? And the answer is going to be yes. Shen being drafted alongside of Rakan and Olaf, Vladimir three ways in for this top laner. It's also going to give you some more map pressure, controlling the side lanes and, and really looking to spread things out. RNG have so many options with this composition, the 1-3-1, one, one. the ability to send the two uh, mid and top laners off to the side and give all the mid lane farm over to Uzi, and then the ability to group up force fights with the Rakan and have that potency of the Vladimir as well. Evos responding in kind by going for the anti-team fight champion in Tarik. And I felt like I've had to yell this entire champion select <laughs> because the crowd has been so 
vocal I'm loving it. for both these teams. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have 30 seconds before we get on into the game. And after that 30 seconds, I'm going to ask for silence from us because we're going to listen to the crowd as we get into that game. Any final thoughts, guys, before we get on to Summoner's Rift? I feel like the biggest thing is that RNG's early game is potent. They have the strong two versus two. They have the strong early game jungler. And at level six, they have to shen to make things happen in the bot side of the map. And for Evos, if you can play that early game even, if you can stabilize and go into team fights at an equal pace, you're going to be looking good. That you are. Well, crowd, it's EVOS versus RNG. Let's hear you cheer for your teams. Atmosphere is electric. We're going to jump onto the Summoner's Rift in just a second. RNG yesterday, so strong when they played through Uzi, seemed to be set up to do that once again here. EVOS, on the other hand, Upset Team Liquid, I think we could all agree, that have looked powerful when on their comfort picks. Definitely the case, and immediately my eye is drawn to the Ezreal. We see TP Ezreal, so bringing out the Prey special from yesterday. We'll see how Slay is going to be able to perform on it, because it, it can be uh, considered a very ballsy move. You're going against Zaya Rakan. This yeah. is Uzi and Ming, who can all in you. And you're saying, nah, I don't need that combat summoner. Yes, there is the heal being brought from the Terek, but that could be an exhaust. That could be something else. And they are going to have to play this lane incredibly well to not fall behind. So we talked about it a little bit yesterday, but let's reiterate for someone who may just be joining us today. What does the TP Ezreal actually give you in that bottom lane? Well, I mean, one of the big things is that it gives you very safe back timings, especially when the priority is to get yourself an early tier, right? Uh, the fact that you can go back to base, buy a very quick tier, and then immediately come back to lane without losing anything is great. But on top of that, you have constant push. Because when your opposition is trying to go back to base to spend their gold, you have the TP to always be in lane and always have that presence. Yeah, certainly the case. And it, it can be very strong as far as, you know, sustain. If you're getting slowly poked out and you base, you come back with full mana and health. That is very powerful. But what it is much weaker with is a full-on all-in fight. And that is something that Uzi and Ming are fully capable of bringing here with the Ignite, with the Aerie. This is a very aggressive setup here from Ming. This is not, you know, Spellbook and something a little bit more defensive or utility-based. And that alongside a Predator Olaf and a Shen with the potential of diving there, that is terrifying. And... We're going to have to see if Slay and Ronald P can play this lane well enough to really make it work. And that's what excites me, because the thing about Slay and Ron P is that I seem to recall in their game versus Team Liquid, they got a level one kill in the two versus two lane by landing a very early Tarek stun into an all-in from Slay. And I feel it's a lot harder into a Zyra Rakan. <laughs> but will they play with that same bravado? Will they still look to be that aggressive in the 2v2? I mean, I definitely think they will. This is a team that does not seem afraid of anyone. They have talked about themselves. We are we are not getting the respect that we deserve, and we're going to show that you can't underestimate us. And so far, that is the attitude that they have come into the event with. People saying, well, they're going to get 3-0'd by Supermassive. Here they are. They beat Supermassive. Well, they're going to get slammed by Team Liquid. They took them down as well. And this is a team that we have not seen their limits just yet. Uh, because they keep on expanding. I think it's a region we haven't seen the limits of yet as well. You look back to Gigabyte Marines, lots of people were saying they're the one good team from Vietnam. They're the one challenging team. Now we have EVOS stepping up to the stage as well. Vietnam is a major region, has a spot in world's groups. And if they get top four here, they'd be a pool one seed only a year after being made a major region. And what has impressed me a lot is the fact that when the Gigabyte Marines came onto the stage, that you could arguably say that they won a lot of their games through cheese or surprise unique strategies. Whereas EVOS have only played standard. They have very typical meta champions. Sure, we see a couple of differences here and there, but mainly these guys are playing to what the meta dictates is good and they're making it work. They definitely are. I mean, they straight up outplay Team Liquid and, and these trades are looking very good for them. You know, Ming walks out of lane to ward. They move forward, they punish that. We're going to have to see. I think level three is really going to be the big one, though, uh, for RNG when they hit that mark. They can look to get aggressive on this bottom side with the Zyra Khan. See, MLXG is pathing it down towards this bottom lane. Have to remember how troubled a time it was for RNG to actually get here to MSI. They went all the way through the gauntlet, beating EDG, beating WE, Snake, IG, some of the other favorites for the LPL crown. But now Uzi has earned that crown for himself he will be looking to transfer that into an international performance. And the last time uh, that we saw Uzi at an international tournament, he 
had a pretty good run, made it all the way up to the semi-finals uh, with RNG, even after qualifying not first seed in their region. And typically he does have this strong presence at international competition. And so far they started off day one pretty strong, not quite able to take down King's Own. But coming into today, we've already seen a big shift for Fnatic. And I'm curious as to who will make that shift between these two teams. Will we see the MLXG of the regular season where he goes to these unpredictable and unique gank patterns? Or will we see MLXD where we have a couple of more creative and not so effective early game effectiveness? Have to find out because if you can't find the, the early game ganks, if you can't create that pressure with the Olaf, you know, when you hit six as a Trundle, I, I just straight up think Trundle is worth more. And when you're looking even in the 1v1 with Challenging Smite plus the ultimate, it becomes exceptionally hard to even win that duel. So you, know, you want to have the pressure. You want to be able to create action as an Olaf and really be in the face of this Trundle before you can kind of get to that comfort level. So how do you create that pressure? What's the path thing? What's the vision control you need as MLXG here to really put the pressure onto EVOS? Well, I mean, I feel like it's a patience game, right? Because one of the big things is levels for the side of RNG. You have uh, Shen on your squad that at level 6 you can look to make a play through bot lane. But also Uzi and Ming need to keep this wave pushed up. They want to be hitting the towers as often as possible. And ideally, they want to be chipping away at Slay and Ron OP's HP. Because if they have just a slight health advantage, that makes it very easy for MLXG to flank in through the river, come behind the tower, and then with a Shen on your back, make that dive very effective. You can see the advantage Slay has, though, because even if you chip him away, teleports back, picks up a tier, comes back, uh, bases back, teleports back into the lane, has the tier now, and he's actually miles ahead of Uzi in terms of itemization. Yeah, and when, when you get that super early, early tier, it, it kind of lends itself, but, oh, nice shift out, but... It lends itself towards going towards this double tier build, right? You want to be getting this stacking as early as possible, but MLSG up on the top side. Going up towards the top side, not ganking bot as we expected. Let me. That's a lot of damage down. Stark's going to land the knock up here as well, searing charge away, and only has to burn the ult to escape. And this kind of ties in with the creative and unique gank styles that MLXG has because you would expect his early pressure to be sent towards the bottom side of the map, whether it be Vision or trying to steal away camps, but instead he goes towards the Shen lane. He actually tries to get advantage in this top side, and unfortunately he does not find an early kill, but it puts a bit of pressure down, and if it works out in the future, this is how RNG find these, these strong leads because they know that Uzi and Ming will find advantages for themselves. I've got to say, Stark played that exceptionally well, though. Very, very calm play. And now it's Yijin up here on the top side. The pillar is available. I think Flash is at least going to be forced. Yeah, let me will Flash out pretty early from that. Thought he could stay around for a little bit longer. Level MLXG six. was on the way up as well, but don't think he's going to be able to do too much do in it. a 2v1. <laughs> he's just going to back off. That's a smart call there. He may stay around, though, if Let Me wants to actually TP back. You can then perhaps look to kind of create some sort of pressure or at least help reset the wave. Good call, good call. That's exactly what Let Me does. Means that the, the wave can't be forced all the way in by Evos. Let Me doesn't have to lose any CS to the tower. And that Shen always has the Stand United threat as well. It's also the fact that uh, Evos always have to go. Ooh, gank in the middle lane. Ragnarok used early. There's the Hemo Plague as well. Walls in with the flash out and the heal. Should be able to survive, but that's both his summoners down. Top to mid, MLXG now finding two ganks where top side he couldn't find very much, but a very effective gank in the mid. We'll put Warzone on the back foot. And he's already been struggling in this laning phase so far. And while Xiaohu does burn both the summoner spells, he's just going to continue to advance the lead that he's already built up for himself. I like this from Ron OP though. Come help your mid laner push out this wave. Allow him to perhaps you know, get healed back up, get reset, and get in a comfortable position. And expecting Warzone to just go straight back to base now. Back up, try and complete that first item, or even build up towards the Catalyst if he wants to go down a Rod of Ages route. Has the tier for himself at the moment. Uh, ooh, we got to see a gank up in the top lane. Remember, let me know Flash, but he does wow. have the Shadow Dash. Does have the Taunt, can look to get over this wall. That's exactly what he'll do. The Blast comes there as well, and it's just consistent pressure from both the teams. No one really finding that avenue they want for the first kill. Thing is, if you make it hard for the Shen to ult into bot side, it limits one of the early game options that RNG do have available to them. And you can already see how difficult it is for Uzi and Ming to all in onto Slay. And he's been doing a good job of keeping up in farm. But I wanted to quickly touch on, you brought up the TP earlier, Medic, just look now at the itemization that Slay has picked up for himself. Because he went back to base, he grabbed the tier, immediately came back to lane, and then when Uzi and Ming backed, he backed at the same time and got himself the Sheen. That means that the 2v2 is much more comfortable, 
But if you go for the all-in like that, it doesn't really work out as nicely as you would have liked. And Ming is almost six, right? So yes, Tarek has an ultimate, but it is fairly slow to come down. And when Ming hits six, as he has now with the Ignite, MLXG already moving down towards this side of the map. You have Stand United as well. This is kind of the danger zone, I would say, for Slay and Ron OP. They have to be very cognizant of, of the fact that that all-in can come at any point and really be on with their reactions. It's about how quick they flash or jump away from the charm, from the knockup as well. Double level six on Uzi and Ming. They are harassing Slay down, but Slay will have that teleport back up soon. Has the Klepto as well, so we'll be getting a little bit more gold out of all of these trades. It's also really important that Stark is keeping the Shen pushed in because that makes it so much harder for him to look for that stand united. You're going to be losing a lot if you actually ultimate away from your lane with no TP. So, you know, it's kind of this multi-prong play uh, that is helping to keep them safe on the bottom side. I'm quite surprised that Yi Jin Hang or spent so much time towards the top side of the map because and actually got himself a free blue with the pushing lanes that he had in bot and mid. And this means that Cassio without the blue will struggle a lot more to find that same kind of pressure over the middle lane. And with no summoner spells, he's already on the back foot. And Yijin instead, his priorities are trying to enable that. Oh, he actually stole away the enemy blue buff. So that's why he spent so much time there. But it does still mean that Cassio doesn't get the blue. So the uh properties, transitive properties of the blue buff do still play out for Warzone in that mid lane. A CS lead as well for Zhao Hu there, about 20 farm ahead, 20 farm for Stark in the top bots. lane as well. He might look for the gank, but as you say, maybe just trying to release some pressure here for Slay and Ron OP, force that lane out, let Ron OP back and start to build towards whatever item he wants to finish second. There are a lot of options for Ezreal as well, you know, Trinity Force, Iceborne Gauntlet, yep. Double Tier is something we're seeing a lot more commonly now as well. Yeah, definitely the case. I, I think that you know, in a, in a game like this, it, both are reasonable options. Some people do like the ice bomb more for kind of for the kiting and everything. And if there's a lot of physical damage auto attackers, it can be a nice option. But I tend to think Triforce is better most of the time, simply to have a little bit more attack speed, more kind of damage output, uh, because Ezreal can sometimes be on the lower end of that spectrum as far as dealing with tanks and punching through them. And Triforce does help you to do that a bit. Armin um, and Evos have butted heads a little bit in this early game. Let me still unable to really get that play down towards the bottom side, but MLXG is looking for the play in mid. The Hema play comes down and Warzone, no escape from that at all. First blood to RNG. Very clean there from RNG. MLXG using his flash over the wall to punish the summonerless Warzone. They're able to dive underneath the tower. They know they have more than enough damage. And now MLXG gains so much pressure in the enemy jungle. Oh, he's got to be Flash careful. Flash in for Subjugate, Stand United as well. But MLXG's just going to die to Yijin. There's the Vietnamese junglers we know and love. Yijin trying to escape. No Blast Cone there for him. No Flash on him either. Zhao Hu with the chase. Here's the call of the Forge Guard. But Zhao Hu can just use the Sanguine Pool. Gets the kill, gets doubles as well, and forces Stark away. And while it's nice for Yijin to pick up a kill there, it's definitely not worthwhile. Your mid laner is not around. He cannot support you. Shahu coming in, getting two kills now on this Vladimir and the double buffs. He is already way out in the farm, and that can spiral a matchup out of control. It certainly can. And the fact that Shahu picking up that double buff, he already had so much pressure in this lane. He now has a whole level on his lane counterpart. And we talked about how this matchup is going to be a very pivotal one coming into this game. And so far, it's Xiaohu that has the early lead. So here it is one more time. Warzone actually going to just ward this. MLG is already in the brush. And I just love the commitment to that play, knowing there's no flash available. No real way for him to get out. Now Yi Jin finding MLXG through the Shen ultimate, just able to knock him down. But the fact that Xiaohu was there, did have the wave pushed in, could respond first. and. You know, plays it very nicely to pick up a kill in a couple bucks. And for Yijin as a jungler, I feel like, yes, it's good to see that kind of aggression, but you've also got to temper it as well. And uh, considering that when he found his win, a lot of his jungle proximity went towards the middle lane, and he had a very impressive scoreline. He was very active in terms of his ganks. You can see he was very involved with a lot of the early game action. But so far in this game, yes, finding that kill into MLXG is great. Can you replicate, though, that same kind of presence that you've had in your last win so far at MSI? And for RNG, on the other hand, things have switched from a, a very bot lane focused idea playing around Uzi. Yes, they have a composition to do it here, but in the early portions of the game, it's all been about Xiaohu. It's all been about getting him ahead in the lane where he struggled so much yesterday. And really, so much credit to Slay and, and Ron OP. I mean, Uzi and Ming have been crushing lanes. They are going to be pushed off now. I mean, potential five-man bot here, but 
Yijin in place to actually defend them, and they're, they're doing a very good job staying relatively even. Yes, their turret is being pressured, but this is still you know, coming on 14 minutes in the game. Their turret is up. They're holding out in that 2v2, and I don't think many people would have expected it from you know a lane like this going up against Uzi and Ming. Yeah, I mean, because Uzi so far has had a pretty impressive tournament. He spent a lot of his time in the enemy's half of the lane. He has built up incredible CS advantages, and they might look for an all-in. That was going to land, but the child comes out as well. One OP pops the ultimate to keep himself alive. Eugene was waiting in the wings as well. Not too much burnt there by RNG, only the quickness from Ming. Subjugate to come down as well. The chase continues here from Evos, but will eventually be stymied. I think they're just trying to push the wave out so that Slay and Ron OP can go back to base. I would say that one of the big issues that Slay and Ron are dealing with right now is how strong Zhao Hu is. Enables him to very easily gain priority over the mid lane and then move towards the bot side of the map. And now Slay, oh, his back gets interrupted. The thing is Ming used everything to get close enough to That's interrupt true. the back. And so it's just like, okay, cool. My teleport will be but up But they too. might actually now look to try and take the tower. Slay's ultimate, fortunately, will be coming up, and Yijin is on the bottom side of the map. So it shouldn't be the end of the world, but losing that early tower will give RNG a lot more freedom to start moving Uzi and Ming around the rest of the map. Yeah, and if Ming can be unlocked, there certainly is a lot more playmaking potential. Uh, the engage here from Makan can be so, so strong. And Xiao Hu looking for Slay. Straight through Yijin, who didn't even realize he was coming. Slay does get healed up by Ron OP across the wall. Xiao Hu underneath the tower, start coming in with a teleport as well. And as the call of the Forge God connects onto the Vlad, the dazzle, the stun. Xiao Hu caught in the limelight as Evos get a kill. Yeah, Xiao Hu just tries to wander on in there, but there's so many members from Evos on the bottom side of the map. Four people show up, they shut that down, and now they're going to be the ones pressuring for first turret here. That is so huge for Evos, shutting down one of the main pressure points for RNG. But now they have Shen ulti and they have a flanking MLXG. Stand United on MLXG, the double taunt as well. Ron OP has to flash dark, does the same. The Tazzle comes out, but the quickness is too much. Ming gets the first, Stark and Yujin forced underneath their tower. And RNG now looking for that first turret. And that's really the first time the Evos have overreached in this game. They did not have their AD carry with them. They push up, they get punished, and now very likely going to lose their turret here, but four members of Evos, again, they're so good at moving around the map, at supporting this bottom lane, and really playing the map exceptionally well. The big thing here for RNG, though, is because they forced four people down towards the bot side, Xiao Hu then gets back priority over mid lane. Evos don't have an opportunity to go back to base and reset, so it is RNG that have control over the map, and are the ones pressuring onto both the mid and bot tower, along with securing control over the drake. Banner being there means that RNG will get the first tower of the game with it. A two and a half thousand gold lead 16 minutes in. It's been slow, it's been methodical, but it's been very good from RNG. I always love how you, know, you see how teams actually allocate gold when you're getting a first turret. And every time it's with RNG, Uzi's given solo gold. And I think that's the right decision because it gets you, you know, to a power point. And splitting up the gold, unless it's completing an item, generally isn't worth it. Quick rotation here from Evos. Slay will be able to teleport up towards that top lane. There's a big wave there, and looks like Zhao Hu is the one who is going to answer. Oh man, that TP pretty yeah, ridiculous. Zhao Hu flanking? Oh, Slay's not in a good spot uh -oh. at all. Let me flash a taunt. Zhao Hu comes in from the side, says thank you very much. I will not get the final auto attack down for the kill. And that Vladimir is looking mighty, mighty Unlucky. strong. That is... That is a big misplay. <laughs> that is, I mean, the thing is, you don't have vision on the rest of the map. He TPs into a lane where he thinks, hey, I've got a big minion wave, I can look to force this, and Xiao Hu with a very easy and clean punish. And no one else is there as well, right? Exactly. Maybe you can make that play if you don't have vision, but there's three members behind you. No one is even on that side of the map. So while he got away from Xiao Hu on the bottom side, there was four people from Evo. So he just TP'd blindly up to the top side and does get punished. And another kill going to be donated here over to Xiao Hu. So we get a replay of Xiao Hu trying to set up this dive down in the bottom lane, and uh, Xiao Hu initially looks like he's got a free kill. He can trade a one for zero. I don't think he's expecting the answer TP coming in from uh, Stark, but also he doesn't get a Shen ulti. Maybe he thinks that he has that as security as well. Uh, and this is where we see the use of the Shen ulti, with the flank coming in onto Evos. They do only find themselves one kill, but naturally off the back of this, they find the, uh, the bot tower and they drag Warzone down to allow them to get pressure over me. 
You know, and something that Xiaohu is going to have to always keep in mind is, is how much healing and damage reduction and shielding comes out of the Tarek, right? You have Guardian, you have Heal, you have the actual heal coming out of Tarek, and all those things can help buy you time as well as the Bastion for that ultimate to land. And sometimes you kind of overestimate your burst potential. A lot of your can really be shut down by that kind of AoE reduction, the AoE healing that can come out. So we'll see how he's going to be able to handle it. Now we're starting to see the 1-3-1 one, one here from RNG. Shen actually sitting in the mid lane. Zhao Hu went down towards bottom as Uzi and Ming have rotated up towards the top lane to answer Slay and Ron OP. Definitely opens up the map for them. Have to remember they have those globals. They can react quickly to anything that EVOS might start and try to do. It's also kind of fun to see how much healing EVOS is actually investing into. Triple tier with an already kind of he pretty heavily scaling a comp. We're going to find out pretty soon if Slay is going to go for the double tier build because he already has his Muramana. That has been completed, so he could pick it up now if he wants. Yeah, I like, when you said triple tier, I was like, oh, damn, did Stark build a tier? And then obviously, <laughs> talking about the turret, very <laughs> common to see that build on the support given how mana intensive he is. Uh, but you're right, we will even see the quadra tier in theory. Oh, no one should start go for it. I wonder haven't picked up the rift tower here. Wait, it wasn't stolen by any chance, which means they can't pick no, it I'm up. I'm pretty sure they just took it. Unless the True Shot Barrage came in or something, but I'm pretty sure they just took it. And RNG now, that's a misplay. That is a misplay. <laughs> and it's going to time out. Wow. That is a first. I've seen it happen once before. I can't remember what game, but I've definitely seen it happen <laughs> once before. Not at MSI. Not at this sort of level. It's just a creative diss. It's like, <laughs> we took the Rift Herald, but we're we so good. It. We didn't even mean that. <laughs> It's like what Broxer did yesterday in the Fnatic game, where he just picked it up and used it straight away. Uh, I think that was something else, but <laughs> sure, let's go with that. Is that anyway. quite on the level of, of taking Baron and then all executing go? That's, <laughs> that, that's the ultimate. So RNG have opened up the map, map a little bit more with that bottom lane tower. Evos still trying to answer the pressure that is coming out from Royal Never Give Up, but they are falling behind, about 3,000 gold behind now. Now, the thing with EVOS's comp is, we talked a lot in the draft Azale, about how uh, EVOS have this scaling, big teamfight ability, um, and for RNG, a lot of the emphasis will be on them finding this early lead, because you kind of have the Shen usage, you have um, the ability for Vladimir to gain this early pressure, and of course you have the uh, Zyra Khan all in engage. So I feel like that the early to mid game should be largely in control of RNG. And for EVOS, it's very much about mitigating that as much as possible to allow them to reach that two, three item spike where they're then better, in a better position to fight. Yeah, I definitely agree. But even if EVOS gets there, you know, it's still execution based because Sorry, there true. is such powerful engage coming out of RNG. You know, if you get that big Vladimir ultimate alongside you know, Uzi coming in and Ming engaging with the Rakan ultimate, that can be incredibly powerful. And when you see Xiaohu already having his death cap done uh, as, as well as a stopwatch, he is looking to make a play right now around that. That is generally why you spend the 600 gold on that stopwatch. And, uh, it can become really, really scary when you're post 20 minutes and they have that much power. On top of that, when you have this kind of a lead, RNG, while they definitely can look to force fights as, as much as they want, they can also play 1-3-1. One, one. They have a Shen, they have a Vlad. Right now, no one can really rival the Vladimir, given how strong he is. And they can just split apart EVS and never really give them the opportunity to find these fights. And you can see how Let Me is building is really saying, I want to split. He went full Titanic into a banner. That is about as split pushy as you get generally in competitive play. Uh, and certainly will be able to threaten those turrets if Stark ever actually backs off, if he looks to group, uh, they can punish that. And, and it's gonna be a lot about playing to force Global's usage, right? If you can actually stand united and get the TP to be matched there by Stark, you go back to the side lane, now you have teleport advantage and then you can look to make that follow-up play. But if you're playing it too slow, you never really get that advantage to pay out. And EVOS have to work out the way to not give up too much to the 131 because if RNG just continue to push in, continue to take towers, they will just continue to extend this gold yeah. 22 minutes in. It's gone from 3,000 a minute ago to almost 6,000 now. And the thing is, like, RNG have quite a few options because they could, if they just wanted to, prioritize on pushing the lanes and gaining control of the enemy vision, or they can look to try and overextend on one side of the map and then use a numbers advantage to create a, a tower objective over on the other. And you can see a lot of them are set up towards the bot side of the map right now uh, for the side of RNG. And if Xiaohu just draws a lot of pressure and stalls out, RNG could trade his life for a potential tier two in the bot. And it's kind of looking like Evos wants to force something because you could see Stark coming out of base grouping up with his team, even though Banner Minion was was popped on the bottom side and Shen is shoving up there. So uh, Evos either needs to respond quickly to the bottom side or force, or they're just going to be losing damage on this turret, if not just losing it at all. 
That's exactly what Stark's going to do. He comes down towards the bottom side, but Lemmy should be able to get this tower pretty easily. Anyway, that split push Shen doing exactly what RNG needs it to do. And look at the top lane as well. Xiaohu has pushed that out because EVS were forced to respond to the action that was happening on the bottom side. And RNG are just gaining full control. They have the entire river warded. They have entrances all lit up. And EVOS don't really have that many answers. They just can't afford to be indecisive against push teams like this. You just start to bleed out objectives. But you know, if you're going to group, you need to engage immediately. If you're not, yeah. you need to be in the side lane and working on that banner before it gets to your turret because otherwise you start to bleed out too much, you start to give up too much, and we'll see if Evos can show us the decisiveness needed to actually play around this style of, of game. And now there's Zeke's has been finished for Yijin along with his jungle item. Rylai's plus the completed tier is ready for Warzone. Trinity and Mana Mune are all good, so if Evos wanted to fight, now is a good time. Jumps straight into Uzi, there's a Cosmic Radiance as well. The ult from Tarek stops him in the tracks with a petrifying gaze from Warzone, doesn't quite connect. Here's the call of the Forge God, only hits on Telemi. Now Xiaohu oh. has the flank, the triple Hemo player. Yijin has the flash away. Evos able to escape, but that did not look good for them. They tried to force a fight onto the four members of RNG, and they brought Xiaohu down while also getting Let Me to ulti. So this was like best case scenario, but RNG were in a better position to fight. They still have all the summoners available for Uzi, and now they're looking for Yijin. Jump straight onto Yijin, that's the jungler dead, and Baron in their sights as well. Slay is going to be able to catch out MLXG, but Let Me does have the dash in just a second. And Ming still has his ultimate available. He didn't actually expend that. Plus, they have global advantage now because that was what I talked about. Stand united for teleport. You can now put your Shen in a side lane and force them to come to you, then teleport to the Baron and look to take that play. So look for RNG to either force or start to play the map again and, and try to get that global advantage. And this is so much like the way that RNG played in the LPL. You know, we always think of the LPL as this aggressive region, this team fight region. Talking to Frost previously, she's like, yes, yes, RNG are aggressive, but they play a methodical 1-3-1 style the best, and they can win team fights alongside that. So now that they're getting ahead in this 1-3-1, the team fights only continue to snowball in their favor. I mean, the, the one thing that I will confidently say about RNG is that they are a very smart team. Their setups are very clean, they do not often skip steps, and very regularly, as you rightly said, they're a lot more patient. They don't feel the need to force a fight if it will not gain them anything. In this situation, they found a nice pick onto Yijin, but that wasn't with the intent of then gambling the Baron away. They didn't want to try and take any uh, over-eager risks. They maintained control of the river, they back and spent their gold. They've now hit three items on many of their main carries, and now they're in a better position for a more likely and safer Baron. And to speak a little bit about those three items, oh, as we're going to get a fight. Charm lands straight onto Yijin again. The jungler falls first. Moyo will never give up. Playing around the map impeccably at the moment. Now they're going to push up towards that top side. Is yeah, Slay actually the one to answer because he has the teleport? So, you know, despite the fact that Lemmy got a global advantage over Stark, well, there's another teleport user to actually go down there. But if you look at Uzi's items, he has completed three, but is not the standard Essence Reaver plus Shiv item plus IE. He actually rushed straight for a, a double Zeal item. And, and to me, this is trying to capitalize on the power trough that Slay has while going for your second tier until you have that Archangel. Splash right onto one. There's the knockup as well. Can't even get the ult down in time. RNG picking off EVOS one by one. You have so many options when playing around Baron, whether it be looking for a pick or trying to rush it down. RNG is saying we never actually have to start this because EVOS have no control over the Baron pit. So every time they come anywhere near, we're going to find a pick. And meanwhile, Lemmy's just going to sit off on a bot lane and split push. So RNG are putting so much pressure absolutely Welcome everywhere right now. Looking for the flank in the mid lane. That's a dead Warzone Slay low as well. Stuck in the front line, but Xiao who jumps all the way into that back. Stark now having to flash away himself as well. RNG playing with their food at the moment, forcing in this mid lane tower. And RNG is honestly just playing the map so, so well, showcasing some superior macro here against Evils. They don't need to force 5v5s. They don't need to force objectives because they're able to find the advantages in the side lanes. They're able to pull them apart and really just playing a very intelligent game. The 10,000 gold ahead at the 27 minute mark. It's a monumental lead. Look at the difference between the AD carries, the 3,000 gold disparity. In mid lane, it's 2,000 gold as well. It's such a strong lead now for RNG. Infernal's coming up next and the Baron's up as well. And it's simply a matter of Evos just constantly walking into their own jungle and Zhao who are having some very creative flanks. He finds Warzone trying to push out the middle lane. Again, they have full control of the enemy jungle and that ulti from Warzone doesn't collapse 
collide with anyone as Yahoo masterfully utilizes the strengths of Vladimir. Yeah, hits the pool on the ultimate and also doesn't actually stop you uh, traveling in your Shen taunt. So despite the fact that Lemmy did get stunned by the Cassio ultimate, he still taunts him, so he doesn't actually save the guy. Just really well played fight again by RNG. And previously we've talked about the incredible Warzone or the awful Warzone. This seems to be one of the games where he's actually really struggled. It was camped by MLXG early game, now isn't having the impact, maybe overextending a little bit to try and find picks, to try and find fights that he can actually win. But I wouldn't say this is anything like the game he turned in against Flash Wolves, you know, where it was kind of that rough performance. It, it feels like he is playing pretty well, but RNG is just playing that much better. Evos are being outclassed in this game, but by no means are they turning in a shameful performance. They are really, you know, showing that they can play a strong standard game. RNG is just on a higher level there. And I feel like during the laning phase, the moment RNG took that first tower, and a lot of it comes down to the fact that Evos, if they just hadn't overextended for that bot tower and stayed around, they probably could have extended the laning phase a little bit longer. But because RNG TP'd in and forced them to stay bot, and then Evos had to delay their backs, when there's no one to contest those towers and RNG are able to take both bot and mid in very quick succession, they just do not ease up on the pressure. And you can just see that you've also yet to get a tower in this game. That is where a lot of this gold disparity has come from, and RNG have not taken their foot off the pedal. Not at all. Evos do continue to scale, though. You've got two, almost three items finished on Warzone. You've got the Executioners calling now on Slay alongside that second tier, stacking up on the Ezreal. So if they can somehow steal a Baron, steal a team fight, they do have avenues back into this game. Yeah, you really are kind of waiting for the Archangels now for Slay, but Uzi is getting pretty scarily ahead, right? You know, he already had his three items for quite some time, as I was talking about earlier, trying to utilize a, an earlier power spike with a second zeal item before IE, but he has his last whisper now, and that BF Sword is very likely working towards his IE. And at that point, he's just going to be putting out so much more damage uh, than Ezreal, where he is in his build progression. It becomes so, so tough because RNG has powerful engage. They have the map advantage with the global pressure. They're controlling vision around the Baron, and it really chokes out your options besides just face checking, which no one on Evos can actually survive to do. And I'm just blown away by how much farm Uzi gets all the time. Like, <laughs> I don't even, like, is there even that much farm in the game? Like, it's unbelievable how you still have Xiaohu and Let Me farming effectively while giving him so many resources. He has 14,000 gold right now. He is just so strong that even if Evos, with a strong team fight composition, find a successful fight, RNG have just such a big golden item advantage, you, it's difficult to see RNG losing those fights. And the fact that xiaohu has been able to pick up all of these kills and win out some of these team fights as well means that even if Uzi dies at the start of the fight, even if the champ that you're funneling all of your gold into dies, you still have this Vladimir who's sitting at four completed items and can shred through Evos entirely. RNG setting up vision once again, now turn their eyes back towards that Baron. It is, it is really funny when you look at the CS and you actually, you know, because 10 CS a minute used to always be that, like, that magical benchmark where, like, wow, they're farming so well. And yep. you see Xiaohu ahead of that, but down 60 CS. Yeah. Too, <laughs> Xiaohu's coming in with the Sand United as well. Warzone once again overextended in the lane. There's a Cosmic Radiant. They need to keep that Cassio alive, but already she's dead. Here's the Call of the Forge God as well from Stark on that back line. But all of RNG are just shredding through Evos. A double for Uzi, the knockup on Yijin. That's going to be another kill for RNG. And they can either go off. Oh, what is that? Zhao Hu just destroys Slay. And RNG melt through Evos. There is no one standing in their way. Stark TP'd on the flank and he was just ignored. And RNG are now looking to take absolutely everything. RNG just knew they didn't have to risk taking a 50-50 bear and taking some sort of chance there because their engage is so powerful. Their vision control was so complete. They find the fight, they find the flank, and with that it has to be the last nail in the coffin, you think, for Evos. That it does. What a play there. Let's have a, another look at that fight, if we can. This replay is brought to you by Acer Predator. And really, it was just RNG saying, you know what? We're so much stronger than you. Our setup is just so much more effective. And it's Shahu doing exactly the same flank that he did earlier in the game and finding that collapse on the war zone. Exactly. And it's, it's Evos trying to go in and, and get Vision back. And honestly, Credit to Ron OP, that, that ultimate was actually very early, but the burst damage is just so tremendous. Cassio goes down before it lands, despite the fact that Bastion came out, Heal came out, Terra Q came out, and the ultimate was used immediately. <laughs> yeah, that's a death cap Vladimir with six that, kills. Yeah. We said he's got he was sitting at four items, absolutely able just to 
dominate a fight. Well, Three times as much damage 6, as 6,000 is, uh, is a bit more than 121. You know, with that Vladimir <laughs> skin on, it looks like that he's very close to graduating from damage school because at that kind of grade, it looks like that Evos aren't really going to stand oh, much of a chance. Production actually mute Vettius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one. You're on timeout. <laughs> <Pretty good. laughs> I'm sure you both want to put RNG on timeout at the moment, but they are unrelenting in this pressure in the mid lane. Let me is down towards that bottom side. No Stan United for him. Evos know it. They're going to try and make a fight happen, but Let me has the flank, the damage. Uruno, oh dead. Slave falls God. down at the back of the fight as well. Zhao Hu's going to kill the Ezreal. RNG are just going to wipe the floor with Evos. A clean four kills for RNG. Yeah, there was a team there, I swear. You <laughs> may not believe your eyes after that one. And RNG. Going to close out a very strong game, showcasing again their macro play, their map movement. This is a top team in the world, and they are going to be tied at first. RNG, take down the Nexus. Take down the Nexus, take the turrets, take down everything from EVOS. They tie up with Kingzone at 2 and 1. All right, overall, it was a very clean game. The fact that Uzi had 18,000 gold, but Xiaohu was really the standout performer, not only willing his lane, uh, but then taking that lead and moving it around the rest of the map was, was absolutely huge. We put a lot of focus and attention on how well will RNG play through their bot lane. And to be honest, it was Xiaohu that was using a lot of his resources to take that first tower bot and then just be so impactful in these team fights later on. Definitely the case, but you know, from Evo's side, they turned in you know, a strong performance still. You know, they were playing RNG even throughout the entire early game, you know, bringing out the TP Ezreal and this Tarek. They were not falling too far behind Uzi and Ming. They were showing that they can compete against these top teams, but for now, they are still that level behind. And it feels like for Evo's at the moment, a couple of their lanes play well, but they don't have that full five-man early game strength that we see from other teams. Here, RNG were able to play through a safe bottom lane, but then Xiaohu being able to get those kills early on, whereas with EVOS, they tend to just fall behind in one portion of the map and then aren't able to translate that into a victory later on. And that can be really tough because if your individual laners are losing their matchups, there's only so many places you can go as Yijen to try to you know, plug those gaps, as you were saying. So you know, when your bottom lane is getting pressured very heavily, you want to go down and defend that, which is what Yijin did. But then MLXG and Xiaohu are able to take over the mid lane because of their 2v1 pressure. Yeah, and I feel like that if you're Yijin, a lot of the uh, early game was very much about trying to mitigate the losses as much as possible rather than trying to turn those losses into some kind of wins, which is the differences that we saw when uh, Kingzone went up against uh, RNG. Because yesterday, RNG had the same kind of setup. They had that strong early game. They were the ones pressuring Kingzone under the turret, but then being able to find those opportunities to swing the game back in your favor, find those early advantages is really what 